In this video, we're going to look at finding the HCF, which is the highest common factor, and the LCM, which is the lowest common multiple of two or more numbers. Throughout the video, we're going to work through a range of different techniques. Let's start off with the HCF. This is the largest number that will go into each number we have in a list. So for example, if I had two numbers and I had 10 and 15, we'd want to find the biggest number that goes into both 10 and 15. The lowest common multiple is the smallest number each in my list will go into. So for example, if I have the number eight and the number 12, it's the first number they will both go into. So let's look at the first method. Now this method is quite limited. If you're given now small numbers or you're doing a lower level qualification, this would be perfectly fine. So let's take two numbers. And what we'll have is eight and 12. So we'll have now eight and 12. What we want to do is find the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple of these two numbers. When we're working out the highest common factor, the easiest way to do it is to write out the factors, that is, the numbers that go into 8. So if we look at the factors that go into 8, and I'll just write them here, we can have 1 times 8 and 2 times by 4. So if I write the factors out, we've got 1, 2, 4 and 8. So these are all of the numbers that go into 8. Now I could do this now with 12 if I wanted. I don't have to, but I could if I liked. 1, 2, 3, 4, then we can have 6 and 12. What I do though certainly need are now the factors of 8. I go along my list backwards and see if any of these go into 12. 8 doesn't go into 12, but 4 does. So I can say the highest common factor of now 8 and 12 is 4, as 4 will go into 12. Now, all I've done is started with the biggest and work backwards. So highest common factor is 4. If we had, for example, now 6 and we had 16, let's consider now 1, 2, 3 and 6. Well, 6 isn't going to go into 16. 3 won't go into 16. Remember, this is without any remainders, so the highest common factor will be 2. And again, you could list these out. 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. Okay, that's finding the highest common factor with a very basic approach. Now, as you can see, with big numbers, this is going to become a bit of a nightmare. Let's go ahead and now find the lowest common multiple of these two numbers. So that's the highest common factor, and now we'll find the lowest common multiple. The easiest way for me to do this now is to write out the 12 times table. I could write both out again, but this time I'm going to take the largest number and write out the 12 times table. 12, 24, 36, 48 and 60. We don't need to go up this far. These are now multiples of 12. What I want to say to myself now is, does 8 go into 12? Well, it doesn't without a remainder. Does it go into 24? Yes, it does. So the lowest common multiple is now 24. Of course, if I wanted, I could write out the multiples of 8. 8, 16, 24, 32. It's the first number that appears in both lists. So that is going to be the lowest common multiple. So for example, if we had now... Uh, if we went for 6, let's go for 6 and 16 again. If we consider now the 16 times table, we'd have 16, we'd have 32, we would have 48, and we would have now 64. Now, 6 doesn't go into 16. It doesn't go into four, uh, 32, but it does go into 48 eight times. So we could say that the lowest common multiple is going to be now 48. Often the lowest common multiple is, and not in this case, often the lowest common multiple is for two numbers multiplied. So again, that might be a way that you check, but it does have its flaws. So that's method one with small numbers and it is quite limited. If you're doing this in an exam, just writing the list of numbers for each out is going to be quite beneficial. So these are the factors, the factors of the numbers that go in, and these are the multiples. Highest common factor is the largest number that goes into both in our list. And of course, we could extend this to three numbers. For example, now, if I had the number, if I put in here 15 or 20, I could do exactly the same. Now, with the lowest common multiple, we list some multiples out. 
Both lists are fine. I generally start with a larger number and then we can write that. So let's look at method two. Here's the second method and I'm going to choose some slightly larger numbers. So when we're working with larger numbers or you want a slightly more advanced approach to this, we can use method two. So let's take now 24 and 42. So what I'm going to do at this stage, I could write out the factors of both of these, but again, when we get with large numbers, it's going to be a bit of a hassle. So what we're going to do here is prime factorize or write as a product of prime factors. When I say product of prime factors, hopefully you think factor tree. So let's consider 24. I can divide 24 by the first prime number, which is two, and that gives me 12. I can divide this again by two, which is gonna give me six. I can still divide by two, and that leaves me three. So as a product of prime factors, 24 can be written now as two times by two, times by two, times by three, or if we like, two to the power of three times by three. That's writing now 24 as a product of its prime factors. If I now take 42, if I now write 42 as a product of prime factors, we can divide that by two. We're gonna end up now with 21. I can't divide 21 by two, so I divide it by the next prime number, which is three, and that now leaves me seven. So if I take 42, as a product of prime factors, it's two times by three times by seven. So that's 42. Now to find the highest common factor, we simply look in the list. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use this one right here. If I now look here, I can see that there's two in this list and two in this one. What I'm looking for are pairs to appear. I can see that I've got no more twos in this list, but I do in this one, so we can't pair any more up. I can see that I've got a three in this list and one three in this list, so I can pair them. All I need to do now to write my highest common factor is simply saying, now we've got these pairs, so it's gonna be two times by three, which is gonna be six, and that gives me the highest common factor. So each of these numbers now must be paired up in the list. So if I had another number, we'd have to have two, two, and two. We'd have to have three, three, and three. So for example now, if I took this number to be 84 and multiplied it by two again, then I could include another two in the list and it'd be two times two times three, which would end up giving me 12. So that's finding the highest common factor. So highest common factor now is just considering the pairs in each list. Let's look at the lowest common multiple. Now with the lowest common multiple, we take every number in both lists to their highest power. So this is a base, so what we've got here, three is a base, two is a base, and seven is a base. So when I'm working out the lowest common multiple, what I'm now gonna think about now is every number in these lists. I know that I've got a two, I know that I've got a three, and I know that I've got a seven. In this list, I've got two cubed. In this list, I've got two to the power of one. Two cubed is gonna be higher, so I need that number. In this one, I've got now three to the power of one and three to the power of one, so that's gonna be three to the power of one. If this one was three squared, we would take three squared. This one now, I've not got a seven in here and I've got seven to the first power and that's what we have. So all we do at this stage is simply multiply these. So what I'm gonna have is two cubed, which is going to give me eight, so let's just write this here. It's gonna be eight times by three times by seven, which looks to give me 168. That's the number of hours um, in a week, 168. So that's the lowest common multiple. The lowest common multiple is the first number that these two go into. So if you consider that, you can quite clearly see, now if you uh, essentially multiply these up, that's what you're gonna end up with, 168. So that's one method of doing that. Let's do another one, let's pick some more numbers. Let's go for, um, what should we go for? Let's go for 72 and 84. So let's try 72 and 84. So using that method, 72 and 84. Quite clearly you can see doing this with the method of one, two, three, and so on. Uh, writing this out is not ideal. So let's now prime factorize. Now write it down here. Let's prime factorize 72. Yes, I can divide it by two. That gives me now 36. Yes, I can divide that by two, and that's going to give me 18. Still dividing it by two, that gives me nine. Can't divide it by two. So we divide it by three and that gives me three. Remember your prime numbers are going to be two, three, five, seven, 
11, 13, 17, 19, 23. You're simply going through this list. Can I divide it by that? If not, I try it with this one. If not, I try it by this one. Hopefully you won't go down that far. So now we can write 72 as a product of prime factors as two times two times two times three times three. So it's two times by two times by two times by three times by three. Or if we like, we can write it here, two to the power of three times three to the power of two. Okay, let's go ahead with 84 and we can write 84. Yes, we can divide that by two. That now gives me 42. Yes, I can divide that by two. That gives me 21. I can only divide that by three and that's going to give me seven. So we can see from here, if I could write this now, uh, 84 as a product of prime factors as two times by two times by three times by seven. Or if we like, two to the power of two times by three times by seven. So let's look now at pairing these up. I've got two, I've got another pair of twos. I haven't got another set, so I can't do that. I do have a pair of threes, so I can now simply multiply these. So we're going to get two times by two times by three, which is gonna give me 12. Now we know that six times 12 is 72, seven times 12 is 84, so that's one method. What you can hopefully see is I can't pair that one up, I can't pair that one up, and I can't pair that one up. So highest common factor, we simply now pair these up, and that's one way that you can look at it. It's not by any means the, uh, the only way, but it's an option for you. Okay, let's now look at the lowest common multiple. So again, we've got the same numbers in this list. So we've got a two, we've got a three, and we've got a seven. I've got the choice of two squared or two cubed. Two cubed is the highest power. We must take each number to the highest power. I've got three to the power one or three squared. We need the three squared. And then I've just got now the seven. So I'm gonna to have to multiply two cubed, which is eight, times by nine, times by seven. And if I do that, what am I gonna get? Uh, 500, let's just work this out. Uh, 504, that looks pretty good. Um, so 72 times by seven, 500 and four. So that's the lowest common multiple. So with this way, you can see that's quite a nice, neat method. So we're writing it out like so, and then we simply, to find the lowest common multiple, is take each number to the highest power and multiply them. Okay, let's look at method three. When I say method three, method one, method two, and method three, these aren't necessarily set terms, they're just methods I'm using. So don't ask your teacher, do you use method two or method three? We won't have a clue what you're on about. They're just terms I'm using. So what we'll do now is look at a third method. And what we're gonna do is use a Venn diagram. So what I'm gonna do is pick a couple of numbers. Um, let's go for, uh, let's make this slightly trickier. Let's go for 80 and let's say 36. So I'm picking two fairly uh, decent sized numbers. So what I'm gonna do again, I'm gonna prime factorize each of these. 80, yes, we can divide that by two and it gives me 40. Yes, I can divide it by two and it gives me 20. Yes, I can divide it by two and it's gonna give me 10. I can keep going two and then five. So as a product of prime factors, we can write now 80 and that's going to give me two times two times two times two times five, or if we like, we can say two to the power of four times by five. Okay, let's, so that's 80 done. Let's take 36. 36, yes, we can divide by two. That's gonna leave me 18. Yes, we can divide that by two. That's gonna leave me nine. Can't divide it by two, divide it by three, and that gives me three. And we've now written 36 as a product of prime factors. So 36, we've got now two times by two, times by three, times by three, or we could write two to the power of two, times by three to the power of two. So what I'm gonna do here is actually put this in a Venn diagram. So let's grab up a Venn diagram and we will put it in like so. So here's now just a Venn diagram template and I'm going to have now 80 and I'm gonna have 36. So this is gonna be my number 80 and this one is gonna be 36. So consider now what's going in the middle. What's going in the middle are the ones that are common to both. So I can put a two in there, so that's gonna go in there. I can put another two in there, and that will go in there. And then we're not gonna have anything else. So if we consider now in here, I'm simply gonna have the two and the two. What does that leave me? Well, that leaves me now a two, a two, 
and a 5 for 80, and it leaves me a 3 and a 3 for 36. So some understanding now of the highest common factor and lowest common multiple is needed, and also Venn diagrams. So if we consider now the highest common factor, the highest common factor now is this part in here. It is the intersection. So for the highest common factor, all we need to do here is multiply the numbers in the intersection. So the highest common factor, HCF, is going to be equal now to 2 times 2. So 2 times 2, which is going to give me now 4. Okay, so let's just put that there. 2 times 2. So the biggest number that goes into both of these now is going to be 4. And if you look at that now, just consider the, uh, the factors of 36. You can have 1, 2, 3. Three, you can have 4, you can have 6, you're going to have 9, you can have 12, you can have 18, and you can have 36. Um, and if we consider, does that one go, uh, let's work backwards, does that go into um, 18? No, it doesn't. Does that go into 18? No, it doesn't. Does that one? No. Does this one? No. Does this one right here? No, it doesn't, but that one does. So you can see this method is slightly better. Okay, lowest common multiple, we simply take all of the numbers and multiply them from each section. So with this one, I don't think this is as slick, but it's going to be that one, that one, and then this one. So lowest common multiple, we're just multiplying all the numbers. And I actually prefer the last method to do this. So we can say now the lowest common multiple will be 2 times by 2, and I'll just do all the 2s to begin with, times by 2, times by 2, times by 3, times by 3, times by 5. Now, if you look at that, what we've got here essentially is 2 to the power of 4, times by 3 to the power of 2, times by 5. Now, that is going to give us exactly here what we had now before. So if we consider here, we've got this list, 2 to the power of 4 times 3 to the power of 2, times by 5. And all we need to do is simply work that value out. So what are we going to have? Uh, 16 times by 9 times by 5. 16 times by 9 times by 5 is going to be 720. So that's another way of doing that. So that's the lowest common multiple of those two. And I've used a Venn diagram. Yes, the numbers are harder than the last example, but you can see essentially we're doing the same thing. For the highest common factor, you're simply multiplying now the intersection. The intersection of the common terms and then with the other values, you're going ahead and multiplying them all. I prefer the list bit out, but I wanted to show you a few different ways. Now, these are by no means the only ways that you can do this. They're just three different ways um, based on a, a range of different approaches that students might want to use. So you've got the very primitive approach, which is generally chosen for um, easier numbers or on a foundation course, you then consider prime factorising or writing as a product of prime factors, which in itself is a skill and multiplying up. And then you've got the Venn diagram. You generally won't be forced into any particular approach, but the bigger the numbers, one of the second two methods is going to be better. So there we go. Highest common factor and lowest common multiple of two numbers. You can, of course, extend it to three. Extending it to three with the Venn diagram, in my opinion, wouldn't be a good idea. But certainly if you've got the list now, like so, a Venn diagram, uh, sorry, a list would be perfectly fine with more than three numbers.